Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Political Forum. This is your chance to talk with elected officials inside the city of Chicago. My name is Mike Jacobson, and joining us tonight is Alderman Emma Mitz of the 37th Ward. How are you doing today? Very good, Mike. Thank you for having Excellent. me. Excellent. So now this is your chance. If you have a question, comment, or concern for the Alderman, the number's at the bottom of the screen, 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. 1060. And please tell your family and friends that they can also watch us right now live online at cantv.org forward slash hotline. All right, Alderman, so for many people uh, who, or for some people actually, who may not know uh, much about you, why don't you uh, explain yourself? Well, um, I'm the Alderman of the 37th Ward. I've been the Alderman for 18 years. Uh, I've been happy to have served my community. Uh, the boundaries of my ward, uh, Central Avenue on the west to uh, Avery's on the east end, and North is Grand, and as far as uh, West End on the south end. So uh, we have a population of a probably approximately 55,000 constituents uh, who lives in the area that we do service with. Uh, I can also show you that we also you have some ward nights too. Yes, I have ward night every Monday night. Uh, we start at four o'clock in the evening and go to seven o'clock. No appointment is needed on that. In addition to having a monthly block club president's meeting, monthly community uh, meetings, monthly ministers meeting. Uh, so we try to help to educate our community and keep them abreast of the issues that's coming up. Well, so it's really no surprise, but you have a lot of things going on. We're going to try to get to as many yes. other things as possible, and also we'll be getting to your phone calls as well. Please call 312-738-1060 if you have a question, comment, or concern for Alderman Mitz. But one of the things, first and foremost, that is on a lot of people's minds today is that the soda tax uh -huh. uh, that, that was just recently unveiled, it came out today, yes. and so what it, it's a cent per, uh, per, per ounce. ounce. Mm -hmm. on, on sugared beverages, mm -hmm. yes. you know, even, even Diet Cokes and yes. things like that. Yes. Uh, what are people telling you in your, in your ward and, and what do you think about it? They don't like it. That's what they're saying, they don't like it. And uh, uh, it's unfortunately because uh, it, it pro we'll probably have another situation whereas with the water, the gasoline, um, cigarettes, people are going to Indiana and purchasing in the borders of county or the, the the city to purchase this merchandise and then it becomes a black market. And so uh, besides the soda tax, re recently there has been an income tax hike, a uh, property tax hike, yes. a bag tax. Yes. So there's a lot of new taxes that Chicagoans are paying. So what's your reaction to that? Well, I think that you deal with one of them at a time and for as the bag tax goes, uh, be smart and wise. Take your bags with you and you can avoid that issue. As far as the tax goes, uh, we can't get around that because we have to make sure we keep uh, police and firemen working and uh, making sure people have their pension. But in addition to that, there are some things that we can do. You can also assess your taxes. So every year you are responsible for filling out a form uh, to have your taxes assessed. And last week I had a... Um, the county uh, commissioner to come out with his staff, and the community came out, we filled these forms out, so that at least it give us a shot at reducing these taxes. So whatever you can do to save money, please uh, take advantage every year. You must file a tax assessment appeal. And uh, so, yeah, exactly. I think that's going on for about a, a month or so, where people can come in and they can fill out a form, you know, with the Board of Review. And again, here's that here's that form right here I'm showing to you right here. This is the form that they have to fill out in yes, order yes. for the for the Board of Review to look at your property tax and yeah. see if you can they can lower the bill? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I've asked my community, if they fill the form out, bring it to my office, we'll take them downtown for them. Wonderful. So, um, also, uh, there's a lot of uh, news still surrounding uh, violence in Chicago. Uh, wow. the, the murder rates are up yes. from last year, yes. and Chicago's on pace to reach a number it hasn't seen since the 1990s. So what, uh, what's your reaction? What are constituents telling you in your way? Well, we're fed up. I'm fed up. They're fed up. I mean, we've had more uh, shootings than we can imagine. We're traumatized, and it just didn't start yesterday. This has been going on for a good seven and eight years straight 
and it seems if it's not getting any better with that young people. So I just encourage parents, if you don't want to go bury your child, then we should be more responsible for our children. Watch our children, neighbors watch each other, and start putting love back into the home. Clean up our house, educate. Get our kids in school, educate, make sure they get to school. And then also, I tell them Sunday school. Sunday school will work for me. Uh, it teaches me a little bit about right from wrong and good from bad. And help to instill in our children uh, a good education so that they can be good citizens. We don't want them out shooting. I don't want to have to deal with a situation like I'm dealing with a four-year-old. That mother got shot just in my ward Friday. And uh, I mean, it is a pain. It's pain for the parents. We should not have to go through life and be in fear. That's not what people are working hard for, to have our community terrorized. So I just say, stop it. Cut it out. Let's, let's look at a bright future. Let's let these children grow up and stop traumatizing. And we have to fix a system which allow our children to be out on the street and, and no repercussion for their wrongdoing. We got to do something about this. Looks like we have our first caller of the night. Caller, are you there? Do you have a question? Hi. Um, I know you're talking about um, the violence in the community. Yes. And um, one of the things that is often said is um, something that would help violence is if there were more jobs that were created for yes. um, people in the community. Yes. I know that um, something big that's happening right now in your ward yes. is uh, the um, building of this center to train um, police cadets. Yes. And so I'm yes. wondering, what would you say to those people who say, hey, instead of having this kind of facility, I think I would rather have, you know, some kind of businesses that would create more jobs? Yes. Well, in, in addition to that, we're going to do, we're going to try to do a little bit of all of it because it helps. There are those who, uh, once the police and fire academy come to the ward, hopefully we can get more young people uh, to want to be police and firemen get them in the mindset wrapped around, that's a good paying job. That, those are jobs that's going to be created. In addition to that, I'm working with the uh, uh, Banner. It's a program in my ward who helps the ex-offenders to get off the street, and they create their own business, like entrepreneur. They have opened up a store. They have a, a website where they're selling international across the world and a lot of kids are looking to come there. Some kids are not just geared toward uh, sitting in the classroom doing the education, but there are other trades that we can get them into. Not only with the Mzuzi Company, that's uh, located 819 North Leamington in the war, it's Banner where the kids are going, and they're talking about it in the community. They do some excellent work, and I wish we could do more uh, uh, bringing in other kids so that they can have a future. We got to give them something to look for, teach them about jobs and how to make money and make it legal. Uh, in addition to that, jobs. Freeman Seating and our ward, when they started out four years ago, they had 400 jobs. Now they're up to 840 jobs, looking to expand that company. And they too hire ex-offenders. They are partnered with a school in my ward, Austin High School, who teaches manufacturing. So teaching the kids how to now use the machinery and the technology so that they can be able to go anywhere in the world and get jobs. So it's a lot going on. Thank you for that, uh, that question, Carla. Yes, so actually, we can actually talk more about this. But first, let's sure. talk about the uh, 95 million public safety training campus in West Garfield Park that the caller brought up that it's going to provide. What is it going to provide you know, for your ward? It, it, I got some pictures here I can show. So let's talk about that right now. Well, you know, that, that project is so important to our, not only my ward, but to the west side of Chicago. First, we're going to have police and firemen uh, approximately 3,000 of them probably coming in during the course of a day uh, training, moving to and from in the neighborhood, which would provide more police presence in the community. And not only the presence that they can provide, more economic opportunities, business would be able to uh, see the increase in their business by them being 
in the area. Stores will be opening up. We'll get more stores. So I'm looking for uh, that vision that have not came to pass during my entire 37 years of living in the community of a piece of land that's been vacant. That's what I call taking out something old, putting in something new. And that, that's uh, my goal. So besides that, it also what you mentioned about what, when you answered that caller was the um, over at meta24.org, this organization that I, we have the a little yeah. flyer right here. Yes, and so, yeah. so what does this organization do, meta24.org? Meta24.org meta has a store located in my ward in the 5300 block on Chicago Avenue. And they make their own product and they sell it to the customers. So these are students all young people's ex-offenders, not just black, but black and brown, who are coming there, and they are excited about putting their minds to work on wood shops, uh, making wood, woodwork, and making pillows in the young ladies. Uh, it gets their mind to thinking. And so if anybody have uh, thoughts in their mind where you want to open a business, they help them out with that business plan. So. It is really something wonderful, and it's good. To, we're looking to make it out a community center. So that's our goal, is to turn that into a community center where we can have other kids to come in and see that type of work. And you also mentioned one of the um, uh, companies in your, in, in your ward, Freedman Seating Company, they're actually uh, looking to expand, which is going to actually bring more jobs more to your ward. Jobs, and you're, you're talking jobs. about for more jobs for youth, ex-offenders, ex and other people? Yes, all, all of the above, all of the above. So when you're talking about this, when you're talking about you know, the, um, the the public safety training campus, when you're talking about uh, organizations like Meta24, uh, it, it, where they're helping the community, what just to, to bring pride to the community, jobs? Like, well, what's the well, you know, result? you know, they are helping the least of these, those who have been forgotten about, and they feel that there is no hope, and those are the ones that are out on the streets who wants to sell drugs and probably make twenty dollars a day out of it. But we're showing them a way that they can make that and more just using their own brain and don't have to be watching their back and don't have to be out uh, terrorizing our community. So uh, it's a good thing. They just need an opportunity, need somebody to give them some guidance. So we'll, we're trying to reach those that want that guidance and try to steer them on the right path. We have an organization called uh, Good Neighbors. Good Neighbors is an organization of community peoples who go out door to door and talking to people to find out what their needs, their issues are, and try to bring services to them. Uh, just last Saturday we had all of the organization came together, which was the first time uh, without it in the Austin community. It's called Austin Coming Together, and where all of the organization came in the room and we had a session on what was the priorities for our community. Wonderful, wonderful. So again, if you're just joining us here, we have Alderman Emma Mitz from the 37th Ward. I'm going to show you uh, her contact information and her ward, what it looks like. If you need to get a hold of the Alderman, you can reach her at 4924 West Chicago Avenue. The phone number is 773-379-0960 and her email, emits at cityofchicago.org. Now also, like again, we have so much stuff to go to. Before I get any further, I want to show uh, the, our viewers, some, a very special someone here, yes. who uh, quite possibly uh, told you yes. so she, she could be the next president of the United States, yes. is that right? that's sure. correct. Uh, this young lady contacted me, or, or her teacher, she, she go to school at By the Hand Club, and they're at 400 on Laramie, and she wanted to come to city council. Uh, so I had her to come down and suspended the rules so that she could be recognized and for my colleagues that she said she wanted to be the president of the United States of America. So afterward, I took her on a tour. And when I sit her down in that chair, it was like the best thing that ever could have happened to her in her life. Uh, you can see the smile that's on her face. It was a priceless smile. And I was glad to be able to take that time up with Aive because somebody took the time up with me. So I appreciate it. So Azaria is, is Azaria. her name, a sixth grader from yes. the uh, hands of for the, the hand club for kids. Club. Yes. So when yes. you see um, uh, things like this, when you see youth who really want to be involved, mm -hmm. you know, in, mm -hmm. in government, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what? Uh, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel really proud that 
I was selected to be able to just give them that opportunity to come down. It was something so small and simple to me that I could do just by accident. So let me say this to the public. We have not because we ask not. If you want something, you have to do something. Wonderful, wonderful. So again, if you have a question, comment, or concern for all of our MMITs, the number's at the bottom of the screen, 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. So uh, in the ward, also uh, some news coming out of it, are some new art projects on Chicago Avenue in the ward. Do you want to talk about that? Yes, I, I, ha I am happy to talk about it because, first of all, Chicago, uh, Cicero and Chicago were... We had a celebration with our state rep, LaShawn Ford, who named that street uh, Mandela's Road. So on the corner, we have a, a liquor store and then a banded building. And what they did is they put all this artwork uh, up on that abandoned building to show the culture of our community. And uh, it's like a sign of hope, a beacon of hope. And it's the first time we had the artwork. Uh, coming to our ward. Not only that, they're doing several Vidocs, which would be Central and Lake and also Austin and Lake, where they'll be putting painting mirrors on. It's a project that they're working with in conjunction with CTA, who is going to help uh, fund that program. And then we're looking to, we have a statue uh, that's right at the corner of Chicago and uh, Cicero Avenue that you can very well see a nice artwork of what we call um, Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate uh, the community and the celebration that they put. We, we uh, appreciate the artwork because it sends a, a signal of hope instead of being depressed. When you look at, I was at a school, Piccolo, on Friday last week. 350 volunteers was there transforming the school, and they put artwork on that you can't help but to smile. I told them I wanted to be a child again, just how it brightened up the day. And I can't wait to see those kids' face when they come in there and see, see this beautiful work that's been done. In fact, well, the school is, is just about to start back up, which yes. leads me now to our next uh, event that, that you have coming it, up here. Actually, on uh, Saturday, please participate with us. We're hosting our 18th annual Back to School Gospel Fest will be held on Saturday from 12 to 7. Some of the greatest gospel singers you ever wanted to hear. And also, the most important part is free. Free for the public, free for the community, free food, free entertainment, free vendors that are there. And take advantage of all the services because it's, it's awesome, so I, I'm happy to host it. Uh, I get joy at it every year, knowing that uh, we'll bring over 2,000 constituents, and they come not just from my ward, from all over, because other family members bring their family members, and we all have a good time. So if you have any questions about that, you can, obviously you can contact uh, uh, your office, right? There's a the phone number, 773-379-0960 again. Mm -hmm. But that Gospel Fest, Back School Gospel Fest, is this Saturday, August 5th, from, starting at 12 p.m., so that sounds like a real good Yes, thing. and our MC has always been Tim White. For 18 years, he's been doing our Back to School Gospel Fest. And anybody in the gospel know that Tim White is a show by himself. <laughs> so speaking about um, schools and, and CPS, now we're going to get to the state level because I guess sure. that there there's some uh, issues with state because the state is looking at uh, trying to get us, uh, you know, a bill passed to help fund you, you know uh, public schools throughout Illinois. Yet the governor uh, is looking at, as vetoing the bill. So uh, w what is your take on that? Because obviously this affects CPS and the, and the funding. Well, you know, let me say I'm very grateful that they passed the budget in Springfield because that really had an impact on the uh, social service agencies that a lot of our community rely and depend on. So I thank them for that part. Uh, I don't think no help to the governor uh, in that either, but uh, even with not knowing whether we're going back to, kids are going back to school, I'm hoping and praying that, that they will be able to go to school 
Uh, we have to wait and see. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I'm staying very optimistic about it. Oh, looks like we have another caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, good, good evening. Uh, all the women myths. Why is it that all the politicians get on TV and say things are getting better when they're not? Tell the truth. That's uh, because we're ahead. We're ahead of schedule already for, for all the killings in the city. Our schools aren't going to open up, and if they do, they're going to close because there's no money. And yet, everything's fine and dandy when all the politicians get on TV. Please, right. please give your advice to the other people. Well, let me to just the say, other, let the me. Other men, you know, to uh, to, to, to let's stop all this and let. Well, thank you very much, Carla. I didn't get your name, but thank you for your call. I do want to share with you, I never said at any point in time that things are better. I'm only sharing as to the things that are going on in my community, whether they good or bad. Violence is not a bragging issue, and I don't think I said it was a bragging issue. I said I was tired of the violence, and I wish it would stop. I wish that parents would take more control. I wish that the kids would stop terrorizing our neighborhood. I think that we need to show more love in the community. I never said it was great, because by no means it's not great. Not when I'm going to funerals, and not when I have to console these mothers who lost their children and don't know why they've lost them and don't know what happened to them, that's not something good to brag about. And I wouldn't dare tell you that it was. I'm just trying to add some of the things that are positive that's going on in the ward in conjunction with the negative. I want to let it know that there are more good in the world than it is bad, but I, by no means at all am I saying everything will great. Again, thank you for that uh, question, caller. Thank you. So uh, we're, we're getting close again to, you know, to, to school starting back up. Um, how are you uh, ramping up efforts you know, in, in your community uh, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, the kids are ready and prepared you know, and, and are, are ready to go back to school and getting kids in the classroom? Well, first of all, I'm working with um, all of my block club presidents, and I'm providing the block club president with school supplies to be able to pass out at their block party for our children. I'm also working with our schools and the principal to prepare for a safe passage to make sure our kids are safe going to school. In fact, many of the principals and the schools are going to attend the Gospel Fest where we can interact with each other. Uh, not only am I doing, I'm going to the schools and interacting with the schools and try to uh, provide that leadership as an alderman and also mentorship as a mother to some of the young ladies that are at these schools. So uh, we're bringing in resources, uh, bringing in organizations to talk to kids, to tell them regarding the violence that they see, how to stay away from the violence, uh, how to get help even with trauma. Trauma is a big issue that we have in our community. Trauma and mental illness uh, two big issues that we are dealing with, but we're working on it and trying to help educate them where they can get these services because certainly they need them. Well, Alderman, I want to thank you, oh, you know, for so preparing welcome. tonight. You, know, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. And so it's great to hear that a lot of things are going well in your ward, and we look forward to having you on once again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love to be come back and share all the, the things that are going on, the good and the bad, as they say. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank you all for, for watching. Thank you. Our phone technician has been Sylvia, so thank you, Sylvia. And so please remember that the political forum is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here on CanTV21 and also at cantv.org forward slash hotline. Until next week, everyone have a good night.